I just woke up with my lay system. Come out of the shower. So I just came out of the shower, clearly. There's gonna be some work to be done on this hairpiece. It's not a fixed back here, as you know, because I haven't shaved back here to stick that down. But I do want to examine the transition uh, while it's wet, because that's the most uh, pronounced balding uh, visibility that I can have. That's not a bald spot, that's part of the lace there. So if I fold that back and I keep that wet, is that an improvement? Because if it is a massive improvement, I might shave that and permanently go large. First things first, this comb is a little bit manky. I wanna get rid of all that stuff. How do I get rid of it? I'd say C22 spraying on. And then maybe soap and water, but washing it off with disposable cloth of some type. Also, I'm running out of this stuff. Is this the point where I need to order some more? No. Before that happens, always buy five or six of them, okay? Same with this stuff. I'm about to run out of alcohol. No problem, I've already got some more, right? The problem will soon occur when I'm running out of hair pieces though, because I'm cutting out big ones now, and so they're gonna go much quicker, especially if I keep discarding them at the end of every session. I'm now gonna to try to wash this comb completely clean. Let's see what I can do. I really tried to clean it. But this end down here is very hard to get bits out. You'd need a special tool or something, something very thin. I mean, I guess if this was held in a vise and I took a, a baby wipe and I slid it back and forward through each of the prongs, that would clean it out. But you know what? It's gonna get more glue on it in the future. So this is one of my most useful tools and it was given to me by lordhair.com when I ordered, uh, I think it was a six pack of poly. Today I'm wearing French lace. This is medium dark brown, so color number four on the Lord hair spectrum of stock hair colors. And um, I'd say it is, let's see if I can do the maths on this link. I was gonna say six inches, could be five inches, sometimes it's five. Um, <laughs> it's long, it's about, it looks like 20 centimeters. So what's the maths on that? Uh, eight inches? No, that's wrong, isn't it? it can't be eight. 2.5 centimeters to an inch, right? Or 2.54, let's just say 2.5. <clears throat> so, um, 10 is two inches. So four inches, that can't be only four inches though, right? Is that only four inches, that length? That can't be right. 2.5, one inch. I can't read from this distance. Yeah, okay, all right. Where's the five there? Okay. Two, four, okay, that's four. So it's eight, it's eight inches. It's really long. And that's how I left it yesterday when I brushed it back. But today, instead of brushing it back, I want to figure out this join here. Should I keep this entire size, which prohibits me from cutting out three hair pieces, and now it would mean I can only ever cut out two hair pieces. Also, I cut this one diagonally, which means I've got some of the side stitchings that make it round. And I've never needed to worry about curvation 
with my small front partial, but now it's getting to the sort of length where cur the cur curvature of the skull is coming into effect. And, and I'm starting to feel like some of it's kind of gathering if I don't stretch it out because the curvature of the whole piece needs to be more rounded, not just flat. But for front partials, you want it just to be flat because it's very hard to cut it out when it's rounded. At any rate, I think I'd get away with any poly or lace piece at this length that was not rounded. But it's starting to get to that point where any much further up, you'd start wanting to have a more rounded dome shape. So I understand the mass appeal of the rounded dome shape, but they should still sell squares, like square shaped ones. So you can just cut out what you want. From sideburns, mustache, beard, the school players, worldwide, hair, that can be stuck on nicely for movie industry, everything. But also for everyone who wants a front partial, or even just a little tarantula for the back patch, All right? Yeah, for those people, they don't want to cut out of a dome, it's very difficult. I had to cut this out of dome. It's a waste time waster, and it's got stitching through it that nobody wants. Okay, so I'm gonna brush forward so I can have full access to that join back there at the perimeter. So this hairpiece is, it comes from a stock piece. It's medium dark brown, color number four, medium density on French lace. And it's eight inches long in some places. So I wish I could have better visibility up there. So I'll get my trusty hand mirror. Not this awkward clunky thing. No, this one. From the shower. This one was $25 and it came with a little suction rack thing that holds your uh, razor blade in the shower. Okay. So I'm trying to look at the top bit there. Join me, won't you? So if I pull that back to cover this little spot here, which is clearly part of the balding area, that's not got any glue on it. Because I, I made sure yesterday I painted all the way right to the edge so there couldn't be any confusion between the, ball, the, the, the shave zone where I put all the glue and my balding area on my head. By the way, I was a bit sad this morning just thinking, because people used to say, you're not that bald, why don't you just, you know, brush it back or, or to the side or something, just don't make it look like you're trying to do a comb over. But now when I, when I examined those little particles that are left in my forehead, of all that I have remaining, and seeing, I better be careful here, my phone's fallen off a couple of times already today. Let's stick to that, okay? I'm gonna pull the chunks out so you stay better. Yeah, so I was a bit saddened to think I'm actually too bald now um, to not either shave my head or wear hair. The, the option of just cutting it short or cropping it is no longer really a, a viable option. I look totally receded, like really receded now. I'm exaggerating there because you can see that those parts actually do have hair. But really back to there, that's all. Now, shit. This phone's already got a message back in the screen. And that's wet, actually. So every time the phone falls in the water, I put it back on here and then this stuff doesn't work when it's wet. Is there anything else? No, I packed it all away. I'm an idiot. I should have left it. I need some. I'll get some more blue tack, wait a second. For those of you who don't know, 
where are you? There. This is blue tack. It actually works compared to all the other shit in different countries. Not, but not when it's wet, okay? So it just comes in about four of these things. You peel the paper back. You're left with this stick of chewing gum looking stuff, but don't eat it. I used to chew on it when I was younger. It's not that toxic, because kids use it at school and stuff, right? And then you pull off a piece, and then you roll into three balls. Well, maybe I should use four, although I don't want one to have it on the back camera of this phone. And, um, yeah, and then when you push it into the wall, you put, pinch it out so that whatever you're sticking into it then flattens and it gets more of a wider surface area and you stick to the back. You blue tack. That feels a lot more secure. I think what happens is heat over time, maybe air as well, but the thing, the thing is it's, it's designed to hang up posters more than anything else. Yeah, look at the stuff that it claims to be able to do. It's hard for me to read that backwards. But there's a list for you to read. It does that stuff. I love it. Blue Tech's really a useful product. Where the fuck is the camera now? I put you down there this time. You know what? You're down there. Better remember that. Nah, fuck it. You're going back up there and let's just twist the phone around. I hope this doesn't affect the editing. This could be an upside down scene if the, if the phone and the editing program don't understand each other. And now you're back up. Now you're back up there. This might be look, look, look like I'm pointing to exactly the same spot as before, from your perspective. But I can assure you, you were closer to that part of the room a minute ago, now you're closer to the ceiling up there. That's a lot more secure now. Okay, examine this. Okay, so if, if I flop. I flop this back. Does that, is it going to completely solve it if I shave that area away? I don't want to cheat with any of those hairs. I just want to see what happens if I... Is it still balling back here as much? And, and to me, it, it, it currently looks like this is not as bald as that area. What do you think? What do you think? It's exactly the same. No point in shaving back even further. What, whatever happens, I'm not going to be doing it right now because to do that, I'll have to take off the hairpiece. And... So it'll happen if I, if I do it. But based on that little experiment, I couldn't really see that much difference in balding going back further. The one thing that would make it easier to see uh, more hair coverage is waiting for it to grow more. Okay. At present, I'm, I'm not going to be wearing my hair brushed back with this length at all times, even though a lot of, a lot of people said it was pretty cool when the hair was so long. Like in the old, old uh, 1920s and 30s, maybe 40s, I don't really know what the style differences are between those eras. With the Brill Cream and everything, and they had really long hair, probably this long, all the men had really long hair. Short back, short sides or whatever, not that short sides actually, the sides were probably about this long as well. And then they just brushed it all back and just totally gelled it into their heads for the perfect Brill Cream hairstyle. When they went to bed, they probably woke up just like I did at the start of this video, with the hair all messed up like that. And then they just have to comb it into position. Make sure their moustache is nice and curled at the edges. I speak like I'm in the future, but I'm fully aware that I'm in the distant past from the perspective of everybody else who's looking back at this thinking, oh, that's so cute, he thought he was modern and in the, in the future, he's not, he's in the past. I know, I'm in the past. Send me some technology. Ooh. 
or solutions to the world's problems. That'd be good. But who would listen? I need to get really good publicity. Even if you had the greatest answer, even if you sent me a holographic video from the, in fact, if it was a holographic video, it probably would get worldwide attention. Look what I found in the desert. Something the size of the moon just projects out to the, on the surface of the earth. So everyone can have a look, good look at it. Right? That'd be pretty cool. We wouldn't have the technology. So I've got to give somebody a VHS and they just go, like, hello, this is people from the future. We're telling you all about how to save the world from global warming and animal cruelty. Um, simply insert the key into the center console in Antarctica. You must have found it by now. <laughs> Atlantis. The penguins will know. Ask the penguins. It'll be a post-apocalyptic video as well. Like, it'll be like this. Off the penguins! It's us from the future! Quick, before the world ends! Send! Right, and then the final nuclear explosion that annihilates all the humans. Because the aliens have come and we needed to prepare and all the answers. We're in the lost city of Atlantis, which is Antarctica. And the penguins know the secret. They're like the gatekeepers of the fucking key holders and shit. So we will let, we will let you know when you're ready. But then they're, they're probably thinking, no, humanity's a write-off. We're gonna have to wait for the rats to rise and wear business suits and more. And when they've got the cheese empire and everything and all this, they finished blowing everything up. They finally settle on white lab coats and become, you know, astronauts and astronaut rats. And that's when the penguins go, they are ready. Because we weren't ready. We were those who came before. The apes failed. The rats shall succeed. That's not a really penguin -y type voice, is it? I don't even know what a penguin says. Nobody taught me that. It was hard to do hard enough to do an elephant. Even a horse is hard. <laughs> what does a cow say? Moo. What does a duck say? Quack. Quack. What does a dog say? Oh. Wolf. What is it? You know, you know, the onomatopoeia in other countries is different from English. Um, like, in English, a rooster says, Cock-a-doodle-doo! Right? <laughs> but in, I think in French countries, it's Cocorico. Right? And, um, I think, it, I can't remember exactly what a dog's woof, W-O-O-F, that's in English. I think a dog says, Baum, or something in French. I can't exactly remember. But have a look into the onomatopoeia of animal sounds in other countries. It's hilarious. It's not that we're right and they're wrong. It's just that it's, it's so different, it tickles the brain. You know what I mean? Okay, that's what comedy is all about. Tickling the brain. <laughs> Which is why I must love hair so much. Because it tickles my brain every time I play with it. <coughs> Another important thing, make sure your neck and your chin are separate things if you want to look good. Maybe you melt a candle like me. Oh, I'm fucking sick, getting sick again. All right, so the hairline, with all that glue that I left here yesterday, hasn't gathered too much dirt overnight and after the shower. Yeah, so this lace piece hasn't experienced all those other problems like the other one did. but. There is a huge thick layer of glue that I wasn't able to get off of the C22 yesterday, which is going to continue to be a problem until it finally gets wiped off. Probably in a, in a fit of rage later on when you're not watching. But it might be actually easier to wait till it solidifies and then just try to pick it out with my fingers rather than use chemicals at least to get right into that border there. Because that dirty line doesn't exist on this lace piece yet, does it? It's totally clean. Apart from all that glue that's still there, but things haven't stuck to the glue, which is quite amazing. Maybe the clothes I'm wearing today are just dusty or something. I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this. 
not, I'll, I'll incorporate that bit and leave it there, flopping around for now. There's a bit of overhang happening over there as well. Yeah, so the overhang starts about there. I think the temples are fully glued on, I think. Anyway. And right now I need more water just to even see what's going on because that's what my cousin needs it right now. Water in the, one of these things. I got this for two dollars from Kmart, I think. What do you think K and Kmart stands for? Is it Dr. Kemeny who began the franchise or is it K for clothes? I don't know. Okay, so layer one's gonna start back there now, I guess. We'll also get to examine at different lengths now that we've just seen the poly before, um, how much lace wants to stick up um, compared to V loops. So these are obviously um, knots. <coughs> I thought I was recovering from that. Not Princess Leia Mark II, but rather L A Y E E R. Not Leia, I accidentally said the second E twice, making third E superfluous. I don't know why my, my mouth did that. It usually knows to obey my thoughts and say only what I think. when I'm drunk. That's a big chunky layer, I probably shouldn't have done, it's like two layers worth. The fact that I'm doing this, putting two whole entire layers sort of right next to each other like that, is gonna make the haircut less effective, but I'm keeping it kind of long so potentially I will cut it shorter and therefore it'll, it'll come out in the wash. I love these scissors, they're the best. They're so safe. I can cut my eyebrows, cut bits off their front hairline. They're sharp enough. They've constantly got gunk and shit in them, but they still keep going. Amazing. They don't poke, they don't, they've got a sort of rounded edge, so you can't really poke your eye out too badly or stab yourself. Really good. I think there were one pair of three scissors in a three pack that cost $4.99. Something like that.
That's really long, isn't it? Eight inches. Okay, so this is a lace hairpiece. It was a lace haircut. I guess that's all I've really to show you today. The hair uh, length. Um, I haven't done any diagonals up the sides. I've let it sort of hang there. This is getting sort of long enough on the sideburns a little bit now that it's starting to want to blend more with some longer hairs, which is good. Cutting it too short was a mistake, but it was good because I could teach you don't shave your head too short, otherwise hair pieces don't meld with it nicely. This bit up here, we know that's not stuck down at all. Uh, but I'm going to leave that there as a matter of sort of testing. Because as you know, usually when I lean forward like that, there is a lot of baldness up here that's very visible. So if I, if I peel that back down into that little bald window, I think you'll probably see more Baldness happening. But potentially if I continue to use the large one, we can make that baldness disappear. So potentially this could be the new size that I need to cover over that more balding area. But I'm gonna also wait for that to grow and see if there's more coverage a little bit when it grows back more. Okay, now, we saw the pumpkin hairdo that I had with the poly, and I wonder how much more do V-loops stick up, like a, sorry, not a pumpkin, a pineapple, how much more do V-loops force the hair to stand up than poly um, knots? This is medium density. The poly hairpiece is said to be medium light density. But it's not, it's probably medium density as well, right? So I'm gonna hold these two side by side. So the hairpiece I've got on now is lace, what I consider large for me. They're both cut to this size. So the one I've got on my head is the same as this. It's a French lace and this is poly, okay? Are they the same hair color to you? They should be, they're both medium dark brown, right? So I'm wearing something that's basically identical to that right now. And poly is going to be like that. Can you see a de difference in density between the different hairs? I'm wearing this one. Okay, here's another question. Which do you think is more likely to have the hair standing up away from the base uncontrollably like that pineapple thing. This one with V loops or this one with knots. I can see looking at them, they're both basically falling exactly sideways in relation to the base surface. I mean, the, at this length, the poly ones aren't sticking out like that and the lace ones aren't sticking out like that either. So I don't know what sometimes causes the pump, the, the, the pineapple spikes. But I think it can happen with both types, lace and poly.
Also, you should also take note that this, this would never be a piece that I walk around in with public in the wind because that would just fly up, right? And you can also see when looking down at the head that you can see the lace material when it's over top of hair. Same goes for poly. Poly is even more visible. You, lace is actually better for blending with side edges. I mean, I'm cheating. Usually I go straight in and they separate it. I just want to have a nice haircut for once without examining all the details of all the problems. Otherwise, I could just take any part of my head and just examine that spot right there, you know? It's like, I need a nose job or I need to get my teeth fixed. Which I've done, both of those things, but you know, it was because I was fussy. I had a big fucking beaky nose before. It was sort of broken. I couldn't, I had two sinus operations and I still have very blocked sinuses. So they didn't work that well, but at least they got rid of that little fucking thing that was bulging out of there that I didn't like. So whenever I smiled, the whole nose came down heaps. And just by scooping out a bit of bone from there, by going up through the nostril and Captain slice my face down the middle and open it like that, just cut that out with a piece of scissors. No, it was a bit complicated, fuck my brain. The other thing is, sideburns. How long do you want them? It'll totally change your appearance as well. I like mine, generally, to be down to the bottom of that lower, that nub on the ear, that nub thing there, whatever that's called. By the way, you have to remember if you're over the age of probably 35, maybe? You start seeing the signs of old age. To shave these things out of your ears. Oh, and be careful not to cut yourself. Yeah, and, and you might have to trim your eyebrows as well. Be careful though with the eyebrows. You do not want to cut off too much. It's very important. You look very unsightly. And don't even bother trying to put fucking makeup pencil over it. Just say, yeah, yeah, I was, I was cutting my eyebrows. I cut too much off. Or say I burned myself, a flame jumped up while I was cooking. And then just, I think about three or four weeks later, it'll be back to normal. Depends if you shave it off completely, they could take more than two months, I don't know. I don't know, how long do you reckon it would take an eyebrow to grow back fully from, from absolutely being shaved off? I reckon two, three months. No, no, I reckon... Yeah, a month and a half, I reckon. Because it's like a beard of the eye, isn't it? That sort of thing, a mustache, eye stashes. See, right there, I think I cut out a bit too much, just there, that chunk. Well, I've always had this scar here from running to my sister, and she's got her teeth in my face. And I sort of want to cut off more of that. But I know, you've got to be careful. You don't want to cut off too much. But usually, my, my lesson, my kind of rule was, if I can pull it there, and it's standing up too much that way, above that point, then I should just shave those extra legs off. What I think happens as you get older is you get more and more tolerant of thick, bushy eyebrows as they sort of exceed what your DNA had planned for you as a young man. And uh, cause excessive growth as your DNA mutates into oblivion as you prepare yourself for death. But you do have to be very careful with the eyebrows. Don't cut off too much. And if you're gonna put like just a guard over a beard trimmer and just shave the whole thing, be very careful. That is fraught with very missing eyebrows. Okay. So this is my favorite sort of hair length to have down to the eyes, eye level. I, I like the styles you can do with it. Short hair has never really suited me and it always causes problems trying to make the hair piece meld in and stuff. Um, these V-lips, the, so these um, knots at the front are absolutely disgusting. 
absolutely unacceptably disgusting. So I'm just glad it's very thick hair here because those things are not, I don't want anyone to see it. You can actually see the, the point back here um, where they're not as bad and then they get worse and worse and worse over this way. So yeah, you don't want unbleached knots. But this, this hair seems so thick. And I don't think people notice your hair density that much. Like, think of somebody you know who you probably guess has a full head of hair. Can you think what their hair density is? If you, if you went back and visited them, you'd be like, your hair density is different. I mean, if they were bald and then they had boom, fat hair, yeah, you're wearing a wig or something, right? But if, if they were full-headed hair and you always imagine them like that, you're not gonna remember what density their hair was, hey? No. So that's why I'm not afraid of sort of going out, you know, so long as that bit was concealed and that was brushed back so far in that was gelled in sort of like with something like muck to hold it in position. As it stands, I'm not gonna put any hair product in it right now. Um, this has basically just been a video about uh, fuck knows, cutting your hair, I guess. <laughs> yeah. This isn't the perfect haircut, but um, really I'm getting more and more used to the idea of cutting back in over this area to try and get that baldness sorted.